the more and more I think about the iPhone 13 mini, the more I realize that this is really all the iPhone that you need. You see, with the iPhone 12 mini, I said that the, it's like having your favorite candy bar in a fun size, but having all the calories and having all the flavor. And right here with the 13 mini, nothing's changed. It's only gotten better. So right off the bat, I want to start with battery life, which has been improved. You see, that's always a concern when you're looking at compact smartphones. And that's one of those things. It's kind of like if you want to buy a hatchback, you're going to have to make a compromise in terms of space, in terms of ride comfort, things like that. Much is the same when you're going for a compact smartphone. But thankfully, there have been a couple of changes that have really made a difference in terms of the battery life. For starters, the phone got a little bit thicker. And, you know, if I was to hand you a 13 mini and a 12 mini, you wouldn't notice the difference, especially if I didn't tell you the difference. So that's how minor of a difference it is, but that allowed Apple to put in a slightly bigger battery to help with the overall battery life. Then the second thing that's in here is the efficiency of the new A15 chip. It's gotten more efficient and that is also going to help in terms of the battery life. Now for me, my day starts at 8.30 in the morning. That's when I wake up and right when I wake up, I don't go to grab my phone because I don't want to do that. I usually grab my phone at around 9, 9.15 and that's when it comes off of the charger. Now on days with heavier use, is this phone gonna make it through the day? No. If you are killing it with photos and videos and really playing a lot of games and really pushing this phone, there's only so much this mini phone can do and it's not going to make it through the day. But for me, I have noticed that around four or five o'clock, even on days where I am stressing out the phone a little bit, I'm able to be at a 40, 45% mark in terms of the battery life, which is not bad. And that's because I'm trying to use my phone less with time. I've tried to make that improvement with time because I don't want to be on my phone for so many hours in a day. But regardless, I think that's great. Now at that 4 to 5 p.m. mark, if I know I have a longer evening ahead of me, that's when I reach for the Apple MagSafe battery pack. Let's say I'm going out with some friends or going out to dinner, anywhere where I know I'm not going to be home and near a charger. That's when the Apple MagSafe battery pack kicks in. I put it on here and I charge this thing up to 70, 75%. Reason for that is, is because I also really try to maintain the battery health. And that's not just with this phone, that is with any laptop, any battery type of device that I have, I try to maintain their battery health. Right now, the battery health on this is at 99%. And that's because I always maintain a charge between 30 to 80%. I don't go past that because I know that I don't need to. So having the Apple MagSafe battery pack and just putting it on here and not having to worry about being tied to a charger really helps me get through the rest of the evening. Now, if I know I'm just going to be home for the rest of the evening, then I don't really worry about being at 40 to 45 percent because I know for the majority of the time the phone is going to be an idle, probably sitting on the side and not really interfering with things like dinner and my family time. So the battery for me is more than enough. I can get through a day when I have really light usage, I have no problem whatsoever making it through a day. And that's just one of those things that you have to deal with with a smaller compact phone. That's one of the sacrifices you have to make because when I look at this, I make that sacrifice simply because of the size and form factor, which is what I want to move to next. It's something I really love with the 13 mini. You see, having a size like this is so manageable. You can literally move it around in your hand. You can easily use the phone without any kind of problem whatsoever. It melts in your pocket and just having a form factor like this for me is worth dealing with a shortcoming in terms of the battery. I mean, I could go out and get the 13 Pro. Matter of fact, I actually have the 13 Pro, but I meant the 13 Pro Max, which would have more than enough battery life for me to make it through the day. But I don't wanna be dealing with 
that large of a phone. You see, having a size like this is just so comfortable. Matter of fact, when I am using this all the time and I go to my 13 Pro and I try to handle that phone for longer periods of time, I get like pain in my wrist. Literally my pinky, I feel bad for my pinky because it's anchoring that phone in my hand and holding the weight of it. And that is something that you don't even notice if you've just always been on a larger phone because you're, you're, you've kind of adapted to it, right? But when you move to a smaller phone like this and use it for some time, it is something that you enjoy so much that you don't even want to go back to a larger device. Next up, I'd like to talk about the camera, which has been a massive improvement in the 13 mini. You see, last year I was using the 12 mini and 12 pro as my main cameras for making videos on this channel. This year, it's the 13 mini and 13 pro. Matter of fact, if you are familiar with my channel and have been watching videos, any video where you've been seeing the 13 Pro, that was recorded with this. Like right now, I have the 13 Pro on this camera mount that is recording me. But I've done videos where I've had this 13 Mini right over there recording me with the 13 Pro, and the quality is fantastic. And that is due to the fact that they somehow managed to take the 12 Pro Max's camera with sensor shift stabilization and cram it into this tiny iPhone. Which by the way is such an amazing achievement. To be able to achieve all of this in such a tiny body and such a tiny form factor is absolutely amazing. But nonetheless, any photos, any video that you take is going to look beautiful. Like I, I don't even see how I can even complain with this camera. I'm getting last year's high-end camera in the, of the 12 Pro Max in this 13 mini. The photos are amazing. And what's really improved is low light video. Like I took some shots when I was on my anniversary trip and in low light, like at sunset time, it just performs great. And just being able to have a phone that melts in your pocket, to be able to take it out anywhere and capture amazing photos, Look, we're all capturing photos of our pets, our food, selfies, places we travel, right? That's that's what we're all capturing. Like, are we really on a day-to-day -day basis doing pro things, like with things like cinematic mode that's in here? And those are great things, but I, I'm not using them. I'm just doing what you're doing at home, just taking pictures of friends, families, going out, my dog, my car. So to be able to just capture amazing photo and video with a phone of this form factor is absolutely amazing. I remember when I was a kid, my dad always had a DSLR tied to his body because he wanted to get good photos of us when we were on vacation. And to be able to just do that with something that just melts in your pocket is phenomenal. This has a great camera. And even though you don't have the telephoto lens, the wide camera is what I use mainly. And I am more than happy with it. Next up, I'd like to talk about the display of the 13 mini, which has been improved. You've got that same 5.4 inch Super Retina XDR display. But what's changed here is the brightness of the display. So instead of a max of 625 nits, on the 12 mini for the brightness level, you're up to 800 nits for the brightness. Now, when watching HDR content, you still have 1200 nits max. So that is great across both of them, but just that base brightness has been bumped up. And how they managed to do that, I don't know, but it is awesome. Because, you know, I never had any kind of trouble with the 12 mini in terms of outdoor visibility. And with this, I don't even think that it's ever occurred to me that the display isn't bright enough when I have been outdoors. Now, one thing I will say, 5.4 inches, right? If you have a 7 Plus, if you have an iPhone 8 Plus, guess what? Your screen size is 5.5 inches. And this kind of comes back to this kind of comes back to that whole size thing of this phone. This phone might look small in comparison to the 13 Pro, the Pro Max, 
But if you're on a 7 plus, 8 plus, this screen size is just 0.1 inch smaller than the 7 and 8 plus. So basically, if you are going from that phone and you are comfortable and you don't really want anything to change, you could literally go out and buy this and have a bunch of improvements, display quality, camera quality, and still basically retain that same screen size. Just imagine like your phone, they've, they're just shaving off all the edges and just giving you an edge to edge display. So that is something to keep in mind. If you're on 7 plus and 8 plus, those phones were big back then. But right now, you don't really need to go to the Pro or Pro Max. If you're happy with that form factor, just grab a 13 mini because why not? This phone is absolutely awesome. Next up, I'd like to talk about the A15 chip. I briefly mentioned its efficiency when talking about battery life, but overall, how is it? How's the gaming performance? How is just opening apps and doing your everyday things? It's absolutely perfect. The A14 was no slouch and this is no different. You know, once upon a time, I actually remember that when we went to a new iPhone, you could literally put the iPhone side by side, open apps and notice a difference. But now we've gotten to the point that everyday tasks, I think even on an iPhone X and go back and try to run apps on that, they work perfectly fine. So performance shouldn't be really anything that you're worried about. Now, the one difference that does exist between the A15 and this and the 13 versus that of the 13 Pro and Pro Max is the additional core of GPU that you get in the Pro and Pro Max. So I tested that to see how much is going to be an impact in terms of like gaming performance. I've gamed on this, played Call of Duty Mobile, and yeah, you know, sometimes there is a little bit of a jitter because there is actually two things. One, you have one less core, but then on the 13 Pro and Pro Max, you also have ProMotion, which gives you an overall smooth experience, especially when you're doing things like gaming. So this can slack a little bit in terms of uh, playing games, but overall, is it enough to be like, oh, this is not a good experience in terms of gaming? Absolutely not. I use this with the Backbone 1 gaming controller, which I've done a video on, and I think that's a great accessory to pair with the 13 mini. You'll get a controller-like experience, a console-like experience in the palm of your hand, and you can just put that in a backpack, take it with you wherever you go. I really suggest that you take a look at that because I really enjoy it with the 13 mini. So to be honest, performance is not any kind of issue. There's plenty that you can get done on this phone. You can even do video edits. Performance is not going to be anything that you need to worry about. Now, last but not least, I want to talk about whether you buy this phone now or you wait or what should you do? You see, with the 12 mini, I, I said that, you know what, since we're already in the mid cycle, maybe give it another year and let the 13 mini come out. But with the 13 mini, more and more rumors are suggesting this phone is going to be the last of its kind, which honestly sucks. But if you really look at it, this is not really a marketed phone because when I'm walking around with the 13 pro, not once has anybody come up to me and asked me any kind of question like, hey, how's the camera on that phone and how's this and how's that? It's because everybody knows that the 13 Pro and Pro Max, they're flagship phones, they're awesome phones. What I do get questions is when people see me carrying this around, they're like, hey, how's the screen or how's the camera on this? And I don't know, maybe tell me if that's happened to you, but it definitely happens to me. And that's because people don't know enough about this phone. People don't realize how perfect of a phone this is. I would say go out and buy this phone because if there's not going to be a next one, this is going to be able to hold you over because eventually Apple will make another one. They know that they have a select group of people that love the 13 minis or the 12 minis and compact phones in general, and they will make another one eventually. I truly believe that. But until then, at least you can have and enjoy the 13 mini because from the display to the cameras, to the battery life, hey, I would say even if the battery life gets you through half of your day, 
just buy an Apple MagSafe battery pack because the form factor and how comfortable this phone is to use on a day-to-day -day basis, how easy it is to carry around and to just browse around with and open apps and play games and do everything in such an awesome form factor. It's absolutely amazing. I have the 13 Pro and I would highly recommend the 13 Mini to any of my friends. Whenever any of my friends have come up to me, I'm like, go for the 13 Mini. This is really all the iPhone you need. If you're a mom, dad, student, anyone, this phone, how comfortable it is, is the perfect iPhone. I truly believe that. Thank you so much for your time. I really hope that this video has helped you in deciding whether or not the 13 mini is the right iPhone for you. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below with any questions that you might have. I'd love to help you out, point you in the right direction. Maybe you wanna know about accessories, etc. And just take care of yourself. And I will see you in the next video.